Good morning, YouTube. Just waking up here to day three of our canoe trip through Killarney Provincial Park. And after a long day of traveling yesterday, over 18 kilometers we covered, all of us had absolutely no trouble getting to sleep last night. But there's no time to waste as we have another long day ahead of us today. So we're going to get packed up and get out on the water. Today we have planned to go from our current campsite on Bear Lake all the way down to a new campsite on David Lake. According to the map, this should be approximately 16 kilometers and will take us the rest of the way through Bear Lake, Goose Lake, Round Otter Lake, Fish Lake, Great Mountain Lake, and finally into David Lake. This is where the moose would be if there's any moose. After a short portage of 285 meters, we've made it to Goose Lake, which looked more like a swamp than an actual lake and we're questioning if we can make it through or not. Yeah, I'm thinking that way, but I don't know if we're gonna be blocked. Yeah. <laughs> this might be pretty <laughs> Like, hey, do you think we can follow the edge, Jeff? The edge looks like it has a thin band. <laughs> Very limited. I think we had to maybe hug the shoreline. Yeah, there's these floating plumes and like muck. Like, if we follow the shoreline and we get stuck, we can at least portage along the shore as a last resort, right? And we might come down to that. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Well, it's open for a little bit. <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned. We're not going to be able to get through. And like bushwhacking through this forest is going to be such a <laughs> we have to. We're nearing the end of Goose Lake now, and it's developed quite a creepy vibe to it as we paddle past what appears to be an abandoned green canoe and paddle through a dead and dying forest. By the looks of it, Goose Lake only exists due to this massive beaver dam at the southeast corner of the lake which should mark the start of our second portage at 585 meters, according to the map we're using. Where's the portage? Is it, is it right there? I think it's... I'm pretty sure that's the portage. Do you want to maybe see if that's the portage? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is the end of the, this is the, end of the portage? Bye, maybe. <laughs> so, maybe we have to set in there. We're not quite sure if we missed the start of the portage between Goose Lake and Round Otter Lake due to maybe higher water levels, but what we do know is that there were a number of beaver dams between, between the two lakes that required us to carry our gear over or go around. Ah, this is so well executed. No problem. All right, we never had to unload a bag. All right. This one's an easier one, sort of. It doesn't look good over there. Oh 
Unfortunately, not all parts of this creek were deep enough to travel by canoe. So we had to pick up the canoe and carry all of our gear along the shore. But in our minds, this just adds to the adventure. For the third day in a row, the weather is totally on our side here. The sun is out, there's barely any clouds in the sky. It is just absolutely gorgeous weather. We're paddling down these little tiny creeks. I just wish we had more time to stop and actually enjoy it. Toss out a fishing line perhaps. We are just totally lucking out here weather-wise. We finally made it out of the small creeks and onto the open water of Round Otter Lake where we've rafted all three of our canoes together and we're just discussing possible lunch spot locations along with cleaning the membranes of our water filters and just pouring over the maps and checking out the area. Up next after Round Otter Lake was a short 100 meter portage into an unnamed lake where we came across these two little turtles basking in the sun, which was some of the first wildlife we'd actually encountered in the last three days. The second portage here between Round Otter Lake and Fish Lake, which was 285 meters long, was a lot of fun. As you can see, there is a lot of mud and it's not that well, well maintained due to the fact mostly because there's not a lot of people that make it this far or this deep into Killarney Provincial Park. Jeff, you got this. <laughs> so it required a little bit of bushwhacking around some of the mud pits and a little bit of creative thinking or just bulldozing your way through. <laughs> it's like a damn moose. <laughs> They're more graceful. <laughs> Anytime when you're traveling in the backcountry, it is so imperative that you're careful. A twisted ankle could just spell absolute disaster for your trip. Just walking a portage from Great Mountain Lake to David Lake, 2,900 some odd meters. Started at 3.30, stopped at 4 for a break. Now, maybe three quarters of the way along. Very hilly, 
Rocky. Sweaty. Well, we've certainly saved the best for last. The sixth and final portage of the day is 2,775 meters long, over two and a half kilometers in length. It was by far the worst portage of this entire trip. It was very technical, rocky, hilly, muddy. It, it had the works. However, it's done and over with. We've made it to David Lake. We've set up camp for the night. What do you call it, Matthew? Oh, that's special past thinking. <laughs> God, I wish it was more creative sometimes. <laughs> Once again, after another solid day's traveling through Killarney Provincial Park's interior, we sat back and enjoyed a hearty pasta dinner. While one of our group members found this naturally hollowed out log, and was able to safely create this little fire blowtorch in our fire pit. So it was actually pretty interesting to watch and see how it worked as we wound down around the fire and got ready for another fantastic night's sleep. Thanks again everybody for watching this video. We really appreciate it and uh, night four will be posted up shortly.